So in 1990, a musical revolution, if you would, was you know, conceived. Birthright was basically concealed uh, in the shadows only until the very first record by this particular band was to be released. Uh, the funny thing is, is that all of the original sessions and all the original writings began back in 1990, but we didn't actually see the very first uh, glimpses and glimmers of this until nearly four years later. What band am I talking about? Come on, I'm wearing the shirt. Opeth, of course. Yeah, that's right. You guys have been clamoring for an Opeth discography review for, well, quite some time. And instead of doing it just as a band, I'm going to do it album by album, much like I did for uh, Iron Maiden for Up the Irons Week. However, I'm not going to be doing it over the course of a week, considering I am also uh, doing the Pantera discography currently. So it's going to be something that'll be over the next few weeks. Now, of course, a couple of the albums uh, I already touched on my last account. Uh, right now, I'm wondering what you guys want, as far as those are concerned. That was for Blackwater Park and Ghost Reveries, etc. <clears throat> Would you rather me keep those reviews and re-upload them, or redo them? It's all up to you. However, the best place to start is the beginning, and unlike Pantera, Opeth does not have a discography that has any albums that the band doesn't claim exists. So we gotta start with Morning, or, um, <coughs> excuse me, with Orchid. I was about to say Morning Rise, that'd have been kind of hilarious. Uh, I remember whenever I got Orchid, it was a number of years ago, and, uh, in fact, the, uh, the copy that you see here, the, the version that you see here isn't actually an original, which is very unlike me. Uh, if you know me, you know that I am <clears throat> an absolute hound for originals. I love originals more than I like anything else, mainly because it, it really just shows just how important that a CD is if it has to be re-released and repackaged. So that's not an original. I want an original really, really badly, and I'm sure that I'll find one, so no need to post any links or anything like that. It's just something that'll happen over a matter of time. However, Orchid is an album that has a couple of notable things to it. For one, it was recorded in only 12 days, and for two, it also had the working of mastermind producer Dan Swano. Now, if you don't know who that name is, Google it, because he and Mikhail Akrafit had a uh, very awesome relationship going on, very good friendship going on that all would lead into Mikhail doing guest vocals for most of uh, Edge of Sanity's album, Crimson, which of course was a uh, Dan Swano created project. Now let's get to Orchid. Orchid is Opeth's debut. It's their first release that uh, is a full-length LP, full-length album, if you will. And the interesting part about this is, is that in their catalog, this isn't necessarily the hardest album of theirs to get into. However, it's certainly one in which many fans either absolutely adore or find it very, very difficult to get into. Uh, that's actually said about both of their first two albums, which I'll get to, of course, uh, in the next review. However, Orchid definitely sparked a revolution, so to speak, whenever you take a listen to it. Uh, up until this point, you really hadn't heard too many bands that were employing a, a form of progressive death metal that was mixed with black metal. You, you've heard black and death a little bit. You've heard, you know, the two individually as black metal and death metal with bands such as Emperor Immortal and, of course, the classic Florida death metal uh, with bands such as, well, death, obituary. I know it sounds redundant, but it's just kind of the truth. Uh, but you've never really seen those two combined for one, and for th uh, for two, should I say, I'm saying for three, because it was combined with a third element, which was, of course, the progressive style. And this is something that came from Mikel Akerfeet's love for progressive music. If you know anything about this band, you know that he and Stephen Wilson uh, even have a video on YouTube of the two of them uh, going head-to-head -head in a progressive rock uh, trivia competition in which Mikel gets absolutely smoked by Stephen Wilson because, let's face it, Stephen Wilson looks like a geek because Stephen Wilson really is a progressive rock geek. I mean, that's just the truth. I love him to death, but it's just the truth. The album itself is probably the most raw in their catalog, and this is the reason why a lot of people seem to have a little bit of difficulty getting into this. However, whenever you consider it out of their older material, this contains some of their strongest work. But the, <coughs> the funny thing about Opeth is that you could say that about just about any of their albums, and you would be completely 100% accurate. Opeth is a band that definitely leads with their best foot forward and does not let up. They are not a band that accepts quote-unquote filler, so to speak. This is a band that definitely tries hard to really create the atmosphere and fill the atmosphere with fantastic musical elements, excellent instrumentalization, not to mention 
Uh, Mikhail Akerfeet's uh, clean and death vocal attack, which is considered to be one of the uh, most unique, most dynamic, and most innovative things to come out of this particular scene. And, of course, the reach of this album is seen all throughout. I mean, it's been now uh, more than 15 years since Orchid was released. It's uh, definitely had a huge impact on the heavy metal community, and especially on those three particular uh, genres of progressive black and death metal. You definitely see a lot more bands being willing to infuse a little bit of progressive or a little bit of progression into their music in both of those departments. Of course, the realm of progressive death metal is something that has become bigger and bigger. You have bands such as Daylight Dies that use it a little bit, even though some people may not say that. Rapture was one that also did that. Uh, Barren Earth is a recent band that certainly shows elements of that, along with a lot of amorphous in their sound. So, this is something that has been seen, well, a lot. And in black metal, you can actually see it a little bit more, too. Take a look at the latest Dark... Uh, <coughs> excuse me, take a look at the latest Dark Fortress release, which was released here in 2010, and you will definitely see that there's a little bit of progression in there. Take a look at tracks such as Even Fall and Wraith, and tell me that you don't hear it. Especially in uh, Wraith, where it actually sounds a little bit more like uh, Dark Fortress is doing their best job to sound like uh, Communic. Communic is another good example of what happens whenever you tell a pro uh, progressive band in a power metal band that they can make babies by mixing their sound together good band, though, so can't really complain. Uh, the album itself is fantastic. The songs are long, however, they're not the longest of Opus' career. This is one of those albums, however, that does require a lot of attention. It's one that requires you to sit down and really pay attention to it. It definitely has a lot of elements that more modern bands use in, say, uh, you could say almost epic suicidal metal, however, there's no suicidal uh, real ideation in here. If you take a look and you read at the lyrics, if you read the lyrics, they're just poetic. I mean, I'll just give you an example from the very first track you encounter in, uh, in Miss She Was Standing. Seven milestones under a watching autumn eye. Contorted trees are spreading forth the message of the wind. With frozen hands I rode with the stars. With anger the wind blew, giving wings to my stallion. Clouds gathered across the moon, blazing with the white light. You know, there's one band that I know that's also fantastic at uh, lyrics such as this, uh a very poetic band, um, even when regarding something that's very harsh, very dissonant, and that was, of course, Emperor, which actually gets a thank you at the end of this booklet. This is something that you don't see a lot. I mean, you see it a little bit more now, but back then, it, they just gave thanks to a couple of bands that kind of were around them. And listen to this. Listen to this all-star lineup of bands that were getting, you know, attention right around the same time. Catatonia, Emperor at the Gates, Asphyx, Edge of Sanity, Dissection, Therion, and Ethnocide. I think out of all of those, the only one that really isn't beloved amongst the heavy metal community may be Ethnocide, and that may actually be a bit of an understatement. It's very, very unique that you see a list that big. And also another thing about this booklet is that uh, even though it's got a very, it's got a very metal, it's got a very, you know, heavy element to it, it also resembles a lot of booklets that you'll see in the early 1990s. Uh, it's something where y you don't have all this lavish photography and all this other stuff that you get with pop rock or anything like that. You know, you have your you have your lyrics so you can listen along with it. You have the very ambient photography in the background, and then of course you have. You know, it's almost like each and every song gets a, is a page in a journal, which is something that was used a lot. Overall, musically, this is a strong, strong opener, but I will say this, ladies and gentlemen, it only gets better from here. While Orchid is one of the most landmark debuts of all time, and certainly one of the most important uh, albums in metal history because of where it took metal, uh, this is a band that did not feel as though that their debut was going to be not only their first album, but also their best. This is a band that wanted to constantly get better, and with each individual os uh observation that they made afterwards. They made a little bit of a tweak to their sound. They did something to it. They built upon it. They made it more lavish, more dense, more atmospheric. Whatever the case may be, believe me, guys, this is just the beginning of the thrill ride that is Opeth. So if you're one of those people that don't really like Orchid all that much, that can't really get into it, my suggestion is to just listen to it again and again. And instead of thinking to yourself as an album reviewer, I don't like this because, think about the impact. Think about what it did for heavy metal. Think about how 
if this band, if this album would not have been around, just how different the history of our favorite genre would be. After that, you don't necessarily even have to like the album, but you certainly will respect it.